Steve Gray and MK, you are now cleared for flight school takeoff. Four, Four three, two, two one. one. Zero. All right, so hey guys, we got a great flight school lined up for you guys. Get your journals ready. Um, and uh we're gonna go ahead and rock and roll. We do not have a recording for the um for the announcements today, so we're gonna try to do them like big boys and, and, and burn through them. Uh, yeah. All right, so welcome to Flight School, everybody. Let's rock and roll. Disclaimer time. Yeah, that's right. You see David Sayers? <laughs> you see when he put the chat? He's like, oh, man. <laughs> uh, I, Boomerang, cannot and will not make guarantees about your ability to get results or earn any money, right? Now, there's money here. There's big money here. But we can't tell you how much money you are going to make as an individual. Why? Because the only person who can answer that is the person looking back at you when you brush your teeth and floss in the morning, which you should be doing every day, every night. But that's a whole different conversation. Um, that's the person who can tell you how much money you can make and are gonna make in iBoomerang. Why? Because we give the information to everybody, right? So every Saturday we come here on Flight School, we even have a special group that we're really teaching and holding system to you and holding them accountable. But here's what we find. Whenever we put the information out there, there's gonna be three types of people. You're going to have a type A person who's going to do a lot and make a lot. You're going to have a type B person who's going to do a little and make a little. And you're going to have a type C person that's going to do nothing at all and make absolutely, say with me, nothing at all. Which one of you are those people? Uh, which one of those three are you? Only you can answer that. That's our disclaimer. So we can't make guarantees about what any individual is going to make. That's our disclaimer. We're sticking to it. Please use it every time you do a presentation and a training. Boom. Oh, that's it. Let's rock and roll. What's you up, did. Mary? Good morning you to you, too. Floss. I did. I said it. Oh, you did? Okay. Yep. I told him to do it every morning and every night. <laughs> okay. All right. The announcements. Announcements. Here we Stay go. Stay connected with the WhatsApp community. iBoomNation.com. Go there and fill out the information and go to Telegram and click and search for at iBoomerang and click join. All right, for your April leaders' birthdays, we are fundraising for the Boom Foundation. And what does Miss Janan Munzer want? I practice that. <laughs> practice that. Miss Janan Munzer, Diamond Janan Munzer wants Boom Foundation donations. That's true. Practice <laughs> makes perfect. Good job. Uh, chargebacks. Hey, listen, guys, chargebacks. Uh, if you do a chargeback, you're going to get terminated from the company. All right. Now, when do what makes chargebacks happen? When you use your card to help somebody else sign up and you forget to take their card out of their back office and then their subscription runs against your card. If that's your problem, that's your problem because you forgot to take the card out. All right. Now, there's a form that you need to fill out if you're going to use your card for other people. It is on iBoomHub.com under downloads. It's the multiple use form because guess what? If we see the same card on different people and we don't have one of these forms, we automatically uh, turn it back anyway because we need to not expose the company to charge back. So don't do it. There you go. Cool. Do not give your funds to anyone for trading. iBoomerang will not be held responsible for your loss of funds. Because then you have these people out there who will, because they start having a good trading streak, they want to trade your money, and then they lose your money, and then they go to another company. Okay. And okay, T. Gray. Okay. <laughs> we need to get through this hey hey i had to talk about the master trader <laughs> Cross <-trade -trade. laughs> it's grounds for termination for the most like of the like beats. take a deep breath <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> and, and now you guys, now you guys know where Donnie gets it from. <laughs> the air's like drink the coffee. Drink your coffee. Drink your coffee. <laughs> Keep raising time uh, up. Uh, see, look, 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 look. I, I'm now. I'm not saying it's not. This is not me saying something. This is me reading off the screen. Someone put in Facebook. T Gray's in timeout. But that guy did lose people's money. Okay, so keep going. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank this you. Thank you, BDJP. What? what? 
Ah, don't worry. Nope. This nope. is your break. Personal star achiever, 300 uh, years. Dual team qualified, one left, one right. <laughs> 10 elevate customers, 1500 PQV. That all adds up to 1800 PQV. Don't say anything. Tanisha, want every person on your team. Gomez told me to drink more coffee. I'm going to drink more coffee, Tanisha. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, CEO circle. Uh, <laughs> you can accelerate vision and dream weekend, but you've got to be qualified for three months. CEO corner, 25 elevate customers, accelerate vision and dream weekend. You get that you go to all virtual and live events, including elevate boot camps, but you've got to be qualified for three months in advance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can take this. Rank up. Hey guys, rank up is the power tool. Congratulations to all of you guys who are using rank up. You're smart. You're smart because what you found out is that this is the perfect tool to keep track of this business, how to use it. The training calls are on iBoom Hub. I think there's another rank up slide after this one. Uh, yes. <laughs> and it's on the YouTube playlist as well. And there's another rank up slide, I think. Yep. And all the presentations are on there for you to use. Click on prospecting videos, grab the link, send it, and you get all sorts of cool information like when a person uh, starts watching, when they finish, and it moves the cards over automatically. It's so perfect. And you should be using Rank Up. Leaders, make your team use Rank Up. Vilma, what's in the coffee? Just coffee. <laughs> she said, I want something, though. Profit Snatchers testimonials. Hey guys, Profit Snatchers is like magic. Those testimonials, because you have to understand the psychology of people. They like to hear from other people. They like that connection. We have tons of Profit Snatcher testimonials in Rank Up that you can be sending to your prospects. Plus, we are about to kick off Profit Snatchers V2. Do we have a slide for that or no? Yes, we do. We do? Okay, then I won't talk about it now. We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> Pips and powder into coffee. <laughs> oh, that's right, V Dubs. Come on. <laughs> Dave Romero, magic bean. Okay, travel and trade corner with Doris Lopez. We we refer to her as Dilo, and her call is on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. <laughs> you like enough of the shenanigans. <laughs> travel and trade. Trade Buddy Lounge. Now, listen, this is one of the big perks of having a Trade Buddy subscription. You have, there are extra, you know, you guys know we have trade live trading every day of the week, Monday through Friday, multiple languages, and some days you got choices. But when that's over, randomly in the Trade Buddy lounge, sometimes our top traders like Donnie Pips come in there and say, hey, let's trade together live. Who wants to trade with me? If you have a Trade Buddy subscription, you can do that. So I want to challenge you guys. Make sure you have a Trade Buddy subscription and uh, make sure your customers do too. Cool. Send us your profit snatcher wins and Trade Buddy video testimonials. You can send your Elevate and Trade Buddy testimonials to ProfitSnatchers at Elevate.com and TradeBuddyTestimonials.com. Brian, if you're asking where Trade Buddy Lounge is... It's in the uh, it's in the hub, the Elevate hub under live streams. And if you have the app downloaded, you can get a notification anytime it goes live. All right. We are now talking about yes. Profit Snatchers 2.0. How much how you guys like the new look? How many of you guys like the new look? You guys <laughs> like it? It's hot. It's fire. Right <laughs> now. Here's the way. It, are you, you guys have your your, your uh, journals and your calendars out? Because what we're going to do is we're going to give you the schedule, okay? Yeah. Now, here's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you use this secret weapon. Profit Snatchers has put so many people in business. It has put so many customers on. And it has kept so many people in business, right? So you want to make sure that you are leveraging Profit Snatchers. Now, here's what we're what we're doing. For Profit Snatchers Americas, you're going to have that twice a month. And for Profit Snatchers Europe, you're going to have that twice a month. 
Profit Snatchers Americas is going to be on the first and the third Wednesday of the month. Easy to remember. First and third Wednesday, Profit Snatchers Americas, 8 p.m. Central Time. Okay? Second and fourth Thursday, you're going to have Profit Snatchers Europe. Okay? At 9 p.m. Central European Time, which is 3 p.m. Central Standard Time in America. All right. So there's a profit snatcher. There's going to be a profit snatchers every week, but there's going to be one. It's going to be America's Europe, America's Europe. Now, what happens on the months where there's a fifth, uh, a fifth week? We don't have one schedule, but if any of you guys, diamonds or emeralds want to step up and do an extra one, just let us know. We'll throw it on there. All right. And that's the other thing. If we go back to the highlight, go back to Jayla's pretty face, if you don't mind. I'll tell you what, let's give it up. For Blue Diamond, Jayla Michelle Pippins, for just being a rock star, doing all of those Profit Snatchers Americas as the hostess with the mostest, okay? Let's just give it up. Here's what we're doing going forward, though. We are doing a rotation, right? She did a monster job, but now what we did is we reached out to our diamonds and our emeralds, and they have stepped up, and we're going to have different diamonds and emeralds doing Profit Snatchers Americas. And guess what? Same thing for Profit Snatchers Europe. Everybody give it up for Ke Emerald Caroline Kusin. Everybody, please just give it up for Emerald Caroline Kusin. She stepped up. She volunteered to do Profit Snatchers Europe. And she did it every single week. And it was a lot of work, right? Jayla and Caroline did a lot of work getting guests. And some of you guys were poor guests because you signed up. And then you canceled at the last moment because you didn't have any home training and Shame you don't know. I'm what? Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you for leaving them hanging like that. But in any event, they power through like champions. And guess what? We're doing the same thing in Europe. We, we have diamonds and emeralds that are stepping up. And we're going to have a rotation. So thank you, Emerald Caroline. Thank you, Blue Diamond Jayla. Thank you to all the diamonds and the emeralds who have stepped up and who yet will step up to be in this rotation. And thank you to all of you who are going to share your wonderful stories on Profit Snatchers. Let's rock this tool. It starts on Monday. Uh, when's the first one? Yeah, when's I think Monday, Monday May? first. Or May no, Wednesday May. first. It's going to be the first one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. There we go. All right. Trade Buddy Elevate Call. Tuesday, 4 p.m. Shameen is a master trader, and he can help you understand how to maximize your profits with TradeBite. People yeah. are winning with TradeBite. I am winning with TradeBite. <laughs> All yes. right. Yes. Here we I'm go. winning with TradeBuddy, too. If only I would just stick to just TradeBuddy. <laughs> yes. Every, every week when I see this, I'm like, why don't I just take trade buddy tra trades and stop trying to pick my own trades? Dude. Just buddy. Dude. It's calling winners. Dude. Look at this. Look at yes. this. Okay. So this. 9% win rate. My God. Right? I, I'm more like a 50% win rate. <laughs> David Romero's like, get on the 12-step method, T. Gray. Absolutely. Right? Uh, first thing, I'm a trading degenerate. Um, all right, here we go. Goal. Goal. Trade buddy called 10 trades and had, uh, I think, eight wins. Eight wins, right? Um, or either, we got a typo here. Either they called 12 yeah. trades or and had 10 wins and two losses or 10 trades and eight wins and two losses. But either way, 80%. Um, GJ, buddy called five trades won four of them. UCAD, buddy called nine trades and won seven of them for an overall win rate of 79%, 19 winning trades for the week. 19. 19. 19 wins, five losses. I wish that was my record. I wish that was my record. So I want to challenge you guys, definitely, definitely get on Trade Buddy. Take the Trade Buddy trades. Um, and, and, and get on Shamin's class. So you learn how to yeah. maximize those 784 pips for gold. Mm -hmm. Wow. 681 for G GJ. Yep. And 
UCAD 185. Yep. All right, mass and volume. The 21st right. through the 30th is mass and volume. We are still in the gold zone, folks. We're still in the gold zone. It's time for massive volume, right? And what do we do during the gold zone? During the gold zone is where we do the insane follow-up to, to make sure that we follow up on everybody that has seen a presentation, right? So uh, let me ask you guys a question. I think we did something that was kind of cool last week, right? We, we asked everybody who did a presentation to step forward and, and uh -huh. come tell everybody how it was. Nice. So let me ask you guys a question. Who did some presentations over the past week? We'd love to have you pop on real quick and tell everybody how it went. Cool. Perfect. Who's out there? Who is out there? Who did some presentations? Robin Jackson, you did presentations. Kia Kinlaw did presentations. V Dobbs, you're an Emerald. You're supposed to be doing presentations, and Letitia Galloway. So let's get let's get uh let's get Robin. Let's get Robin on. Okay. And let's get Letitia on, and let's get Kia on. Okay. Um, All right. Are see. you getting them? Yeah. All right. You just have to uh. You can just allow them to talk, or or actually, if oh. you can make, you can promote to panelists. They can actually turn on the camera. That's even better. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, they won't turn on their camera. <laughs> well, you can you can turn it on if you want to. Uh, if you're in a position where you can turn on your camera, did you get them already? Yeah. Let's see who do we have. Who do we have? Who's on? Good first? morning. Good morning. Good morning. Robin Jackson, what's happening? Hold on a second. Hi. You know, um, uh, do you want to turn on your camera? I can. I don't. I don't know how pretty I look, but I'll turn it on. All right. Cool. I'm sure. I'm sure. Good morning. I'm pretty, look, at you. You look prettier than Mark. That's for sure. Good What's Good going morning. on? How are you doing, Robin Jackson? I'm doing amazing. It's an amazing morning. I did my first presentation this week. Um, I ended up doing three throughout the week, and I have two what? more lined up today. Three. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. All right. So tell us how, tell us about the first one and then tell us about the other two. Well, so the first one was a little bit shaky and I was beating myself up a little bit. Um, I didn't even have, uh, Julius shadowed me on one, but I didn't have anybody on my first one. And I felt a little nervous, but I got through it. My second one was 10 times better. My third one, I felt like I rocked it, and now I'm just I'm ready to take off. <laughs> All right, I love it. I love this, Robin. Okay, so so what was the what did you learn? Tell us about the experience. What did you learn in the process of of doing your first three presentations? Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. My first one, I think I was talking so fast I couldn't even hear my my person. <laughs> So slow down. And then um, the second one, I learned uh, that sometimes I get kind of off track. So I definitely encourage people to use the slides to stay on track, to stay on the point. Mm -hmm. And the third thing I learned was just get out there and do it because um, sometimes the pain of not doing it is worse than the pain doing it. It's, it's, it's like ripping off a bandaid and then you feel so much better. <laughs> wow. 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 Robin, that is phenomenal. So did, uh, what were the results of your presentation? Did you get any customers? Did you get any signups yet? So I have one person thinking about it. I really do believe he's going to sign up today and I have a couple customers out of it. Nice. Cool. Nice. So how do you feel? How do you feel? Do you feel powerful now? Because yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I actually T Gray taking one from your book, um, Ann Holton's. I have like eight one on ones set up to present next Wednesday. What? Um, I'm actually going out of town, two and a half hour drive, and I'm um meeting people back to back one on one, and I'm gonna what? Nice. That is incredible. Eight. I'm so proud. Yeah. Of you. Eight. Yep. My God. 
you know, Robin, let me tell you, you really are taking a page out of my book. I don't know if I, if you ever heard me talk about this when, yeah. when Hope first launched me here and how I would literally, there's a restaurant here in, in Houston that I, I can't stand it anymore because I did so many presentations there. It's called Luby's. I, I, can't, him. I can't even drive by there anymore. They know him there. They know him yeah, by there. They still know me from 2004, right? But but that's what I would do, back to back to back to back to back presentations. And uh, I'm excited for you because this really makes you powerful because now you have your own business. Yep. You're running your own business. You're run, your business is running at Robin speed, not Julia's speed anymore. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Right. Awesome, awesome. So proud of you. Thanks for coming on and sharing. Thank you. How, Thank hey, you guys. Guys, are you guys encouraged by Robin? Yes. Right? Her, for, for Robin, presentations are like lettuce potato chips. She couldn't eat just one. All right. Excellent. All right. Well, let's get Kia on. Kia, come on. Turn yeah. on if you, you can turn on your camera. Pop on your camera if you can. If you if you if you can't, no worries. Uh, I can't. But, uh, can you hear me? Yep, absolutely. So to so tell us about your presentations. So I actually had a presentation on Monday. So coming off of the uh, mastermind weekend here in Atlanta. I had one gentleman who was supposed to be in attendance. He had reached out to me earlier last week to let me know he was not gonna be able to make it. So I went ahead and scheduled a meeting following so he can see the presentation. So I scheduled one. So I literally raced back to Charlotte Monday afternoon and jumped on a Zoom. And it was a Zoom with him and another um, another prospect, but actually that prospect was for another business partner of mine. But anyway, it was pretty much a one-on-one -on -one conversation in a sense where it's a little bit more intimate. So I was able to kind of relate some of the topics to what he currently does. Uh, and he actually mentioned to me that he was introduced to Ibomarang a couple of years ago because he's from Jamaica. So he's been in Atlanta for about like, I think six months now. And he said at the time, he wasn't interested, but then of course now he said he was interested. Unfortunately for him, he's actually going through a mechanic school for aviation and he wanted to focus on that. But he said once he completes that, he definitely wanted to follow back with me and get into the, the trading piece of it. What he did do for me was provide me with some referrals. So I've been starting to connect with those referrals to see if I can get some Zoom set up to share the information. Cool. Nice. Now, was that your first presentation? No, I've been doing presentations for a while now. So I'm always open to doing presentations because it just gives me the ability to connect with our prospects. Nice. Super nice. Super nice. So you're not afraid of presentations anymore? I'm not. Not at all. Do you remember your first one? Yeah. I do. Yeah? Were you? Yeah. Were, I, so you I started off, actually, I started off with a uh, Kevin, Kevin started me, he started me with hosting at first to kind of get comfortable having my presence in front of the audience. And then we started to move from hosting to tag teaming with some of the other business partners within the Jet Setters doing presentations. And then after that, he was like, okay, are you ready to present by yourself? And I was like, sure, why not? And then of course I did it and I was like, okay, I feel so much better. And I mean, the more I've done it, I've gotten more and more comfortable to the point where I don't always necessarily use the slides. I just kind of speak to it from my perspective and my experiences and how it can relate back to other folks. Cool, cool. So uh, for, that is absolutely phenomenal. And and I love it because what happens is, let me ask you a question. Do you just, it just feels like a normal thing now for you to do a presentation? It does. I mean, if I can get up a four hour, four hour drive from Atlanta and then 30 minutes to spare and pop up my laptop and do a presentation, I think that's pretty normal. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. By the way, I let me encourage you and everyone else to use the slides, right? And I'll and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because how you start them is what they're going to do, right? And and your prospects are studying everything that you do, like how you expose them, mm -hmm. and they're and and they're that you're teaching them by how you expose them how they're going to do the business, right? And you're super talented because I know you're a corporate professional and I know you could do the presentation with no slides. You could probably, we could probably give you a napkin and you could do the whole thing and knock it out. But the challenge is that, that, that really taps into your talent, right? And your personal skill. Um, and what you want to show them is that they can do it. So I just use the slides and show them the slides and that way they know that if they can read and point at the same time, they can rock and roll. But I love it. What advice do you have for people, Kia? 
who are contemplating doing their first presentation, maybe they're a little nervous. Um, do you have some advice for them? So here's what I would say to folks. I mean, typically you're nervous and it's okay because for me personally, I find it humbling because that means I always constantly feel like there's a work in progress in me. So when I do have a little bit of nerves, I don't take it as me not knowing what I'm doing. It's more so around, I'm not putting myself in a position of feeling like I got this and I'm never gonna mess up. I'm always just looking at the aspect of just continuing to progress and get better at what I do. Man, Key, you know what? I always love listening to you. You just have such a great way. We need to hurry up and get you to Diamond because I need we need you on, on flight school training. <laughs> we need you on flight school because you're just so fantastic. Thank you for sharing and for encouraging everybody. And Absolutely. Hey, everybody. Can you guys give Kia some love in the chat? Give Kia some love in the chat. She is running her business. Her business is running at Kia Speed. And because she is doing her own presentations and that is awesome. And you did how many this week, you said? I actually did two. You did two presentations this week. Way to go. All right. I think we, Letitia, we had you on here last week, right? Yeah. So this is an, so this is an update. Present. This is an update conversation. So last week you came on and you shared with us that you had started doing presentations. What is the update this week? How many presentations did you do this week? Hey, um, I did three this week. You did three this week. Yeah. And thank you for coming on camera. We love that. So you did yeah. three this week. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Tell us about your three presentations. So um, the three presentations, um, I was, you know, I, I do them every week or whatever. Um, and this week I'm, like, I'm not going to lie, like, it was a bad week. We really didn't get, like, the people on as much as, you know, that we needed to. So, yeah. But um, next week, I will be doing um, five. Um, it's actually six presentations that we have for the week um, as far as the team. But five of the six I will actually be doing um, next week. Okay. 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 Nice. So, you, yeah. you, want, you want to know what's really cool about what you just said? Mm -hmm. You didn't have a big week of results, but you were in the game. Yes. Right. And and here's what I've learned from my experience. What I've learned from my experience is this. You 1000% cannot win if you are not in the game. Right. Being in the game doesn't guarantee that you're going to win. But not being in the game guarantees that you are absolutely not going to win. Yeah. Right. Sure. So you showed up. You did the presentations. You didn't have necessarily a big week of results. No worries. Keep at it. And you are keeping at it because you didn't, you did three this week and now you got five next week. Yeah. Yes. To close out the month, like very strong. All Kevin right. Clayton, we're proud of her. Excellent. Super <laughs> yeah. proud. Super, super proud. Way <laughs> to go. Awesome. Everybody show Letitia some love. She came on here two weeks in a row, gave us the follow up. We love that. Give some love in the chat to Robin. Kia and Lutitia, and who is going to do presentations next week? Who's going to do some presentations next week? Who's taking control of their business? Who's going to do, you know, Jenny's going to do them. Great. Bernard, you're doing them. Fantastic. Rubina, you're going to be in the game. That's awesome. Jackie Phillips. All right. I love it. Jamil, Julius Mitchell, Steen. Louis Fre Frederick. Hey, Frederick, is a, that's a new name for me. Frederick de Jung. All right. Good to see you. Tom. Okay, good. Excellent. 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 Great. Dr. Okay. Increase. I have one set up. Wonderful. Eric, Team Cheek. Well, Team Cheek, I know you guys are rocking them. Team Cheek, I need Clayton, I can't. Key and Leticia doing all of them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You're going to have to find some new people. There's 6 million people here. In, <laughs> right? Just stand at the intersection of one of those spaghetti freeways I had on my Instagram story and, and you'll be able to catch people stuck in traffic and do presentations in their cars. <laughs> All right. You know what? I want to um, I want to do an, uh, an impromptu training right now. Just okay. a topic that uh, it, it's, it's not in the slide deck, but I just remember something I was thinking about 
with Vita, right? Because I was okay. I was doing some outcomes with cool. Vita earlier this week. And uh, you know, we were talking about launching a new person. Okay. And then you guys get ready, it's gonna be some good stuff right here, right? So you're launching a new person, especially when you're launching a new person who's got some influence, right? You're launching a new person, you've got some influence. And what I want to share with you, I want to teach you now is how to create the sense of urgency that gets people taking action right then and there, right? So, you know, we're going to, um, for, to protect the innocent, we're going to call the new person, um, Joe. No, we're, no, we're going to call the new person, Jane. All right. So we've got Jane, new person. And Jane is uh, a very influential person. Jane is one of those people that she's got businesses where uh, she's got a lot of people who have a lot of customers who know, love, and respect her. Um, she's known throughout the community. Uh, she's one of those people that when she invites people, they show up. Okay, right? If you get if you if you know that kind of person, uh, somebody put that in the chat. I, I get I get you. I'm with. I feel you. I, I know what you're talking about. All right. Give me some, give me some acknowledgement in the chat there. So you got this person, Jane, right? That is, she's a super four checker, right? This is the person you were looking for. And remember when a new person gets started, what is it that we want to do? What do we want to do when a new person starts? A new person starts, what's our objective? Who knows? We want the list, but yeah, Kevin, there you go. We want to get them paid. What do we want to do? Let's be more specific. We want to help them do what? Yeah, we want to book their four meetings immediately. And we want to help them get a win in seven days. And somebody define the win. What is the win? What do we want them? What does the win look like? What do we want them to do? What do we want to accomplish in the first seven days? Ooh, I'm, I'm surprised we don't have the answer yet. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. So everybody write this in your notes. When you When you get a new person enrolled on your team, your job, your mission is to help them enroll their first two people in their first seven days or less. Okay, put in your calendar. I, that This is the right answer. This is the definitive right answer right here. We're gonna get somebody to put it in the chat. You wanna help them enroll their first two people in their first seven days or less. I wanna see that in the chat. And then I want everybody to write that in their notes just like that, okay? The next time we ask that question, we should get that's the answer that comes back, okay? That's the answer that comes back from everybody. It fills the chat, okay? So when a new person gets started, you want to help them enroll their first two people in their first seven days or less. First two business partners, first seven days or less, okay? All right, so I'm going to ask the question again, and let's see what we get in the chat. When you sign up a new person, what is your immediate objective? What's the, what is your immediate objective? Okay, there we go. Help them enroll their first two people in their first seven days or less. I don't see it on Facebook yet, though. Where are where you at, Facebook? Zoom's got it. You want to help? Come on. Somebody get it on Facebook. There we go. Ruth, let's finish it, Ruth. Finish it. You say get their first two, but you didn't put the rest. I want you guys to be very, very specific. Okay? Thank you, Diana. Their first two business partners in seven days or less. Sonia's got it. First two business people in seven days or less. Carmen, first two business people in seven days or less. All right? So that's your objective whenever you have a new person. You want to get into that list and help them get a win right away. And that's going to help you to continue to, to rock with them. So you schedule their first four meetings. Their first four meetings, that's that's part of you moving them along, right? So now you're doing that first presentation. And this person, Jane, you know, she you 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 challenged Jane to get the top 10 in the room. They got eight that showed up. That's telling you that's a clue, right? So you go and you do your presentation. And now you get to the end. I want to share with you what to say to get people rocking. You guys ready? If you're ready, say I'm ready.
If you ready, say I'm ready. If you're ready, say I'm ready. All right, cool. Okay, everybody's ready. Facebook's ready too. Good, here we go. All right. So, hey, everybody. Uh, we've gone through the information. I've done my job, which was to share with you the information. And now uh, it's time to it's, it's it's time to give you guys the opportunity to join the team or to become customers. But here's what I want to share with you guys before we do that, before before you guys start making a decision. We're so excited to have Jane as part of the family, right? How many of you guys are here? You you really know who Jane is. You guys know Jane? Excellent. How many of you guys know that Jane is successful businesswoman in the community? She's well known in the community. She's influential in the community. How many of you, how many of you know that, right? How many of you, based on what you know about Jane, understand that Jane is fully equipped to crush this business and build an amazing team. As a matter of fact, how many of you would bet money on Jane's success, right? Excellent. Well, listen, here's the deal. This is the first. You guys are blessed. This is the absolute first. Jane thought enough of you that you are the very first people that she's exposing to this on her way to the top of the company. And we are committed to working with Jane to help her become one of our top, one of our top success stories. Here's the deal. Jane's going to build a massive business. We're going to help her do that. You have the opportunity because you've seen it before everyone else to override Jane's success. Meaning we've got this schedule next week, the week after, the week after, and we'll probably do some extra ones in between. And when, if it made sense to Jane, it's going to make sense to other people. If it's making sense to you, which it is, right? It's going to make sense to other people. And when they get started, if you are in already, you have the opportunity to override their success, to override their results. Why? Because our structure that we have is called a dual team. And it simply means that once Jane has one person at the top of their left, her, her left team, and once she has one at the top of her right team, guess where everyone else has to go? Underneath those people. So that means those of you who saw it first and who are able to make a decision to lock in your spot actually can override the others. Those of you who are going to be slower to make a decision and who need to think about it, you will actually potentially be part of someone else's success. So I got to ask you a question. Those people who are yet to come, how many of you would rather them be under you than over you? Okay, great. So I want to challenge you to get started. Now, here's the thing. You're going to ask me, okay, well, what position should I get started at? If you can do the CEO pack, you should. It is the best opportunity. It does give you access to absolutely everything and it creates new, it creates the standard in your business. So if you can do the CEO pack today, you absolutely should. But some of you are not prepared to do the CEO pack today, right? For a variety of reasons. No worries. Don't wait. Don't put it off because putting it off means being underneath those other people. So what I challenge you to do is do the very best that you can do today. If you can't do CEO pack, do the executive pack. If you can't do the executive pack, do the affiliate pack. Because guess what? You can upgrade to the other packs later on, but you will maintain your spot. Does that make sense to everybody? If it makes sense to you, just, just let me see by a show of hands or a nod your head. Okay, great, great, fantastic. So with that said, Jane, let's get the music turned back on. We're gonna come and answer any questions that you might have and get you started. You guys ready? Excellent, let's go. How many of you just learned something? If you just learned something, put it in the chat. Somebody tell me what you just learned. Does, somebody, does anybody wanna come on and talk about what you just learned? We'll, we'll, we'll put you on real quick. Who wants to come on and talk about what you just learned? You, I think you're gonna to need to say, I wanna talk. I want to talk. Anybody want to talk? You guys afraid? You guys nervous? It's okay. All right. Well, that's okay then. If, uh, Danny, Pat, you know what? Let's get Pat Pamplin on here. Pat, I want you to come on here real quick. All right. Let's get Pat. Here you come, Pat. 
We just promoted you to panelist. There you go. If you can turn on your camera, you can. If you can't, no worries. But I want to I want to have a little dialogue with you about what you just learned from what we just did. Okay. There okay. you go. Good morning. Pat, how are you? I am doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to to speak. What I've learned from what you've just taught us is firstly uh, to remind people who are listening to Jane that she is super successful and that she is on her way to the top, that she will rock the business, get their confirmation that they agree that she will rock the business. And as a result, they can come along for the ride while she's going to the top and that she's gonna be supported from a corporate perspective. Secondarily, that she thought enough of you as the invitee to expose you uh, while she is, you know, while she is very new, that, she, that you are some of the first exposures that she has gotten. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, to, um, I just have one other note here, that she, that, um, that you could, or because of the, the structure um, of the, the dual team, that it's a matter of timing, that you could get in early and that everybody who comes in will come in under you. So that helps to explode your business as she is growing her business. So those are the key lessons that I believe that I took away from what you've just taught. Excellent, excellent, Pat. You got it. You absolutely got it. So what? So Pat, what we did is we just taught everybody how to leverage the timing and positioning factor of the dual team to help people make decisions. Let me tell you a quick story. I started a Jane and a Joe in a city that were very, they were super powerful, influential couple. And literally they started inviting people at about 11 or 12 p.m. the night before for a 2 p.m. This was 11 or 12 p.m. on a Saturday evening, right? So, I mean, almost midnight, they're calling people, mm -hmm. inviting them to a 2 p.m. presentation at their house because they just got started, right? And, and they lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I, we met in New Orleans, and I was supposed to be going back home to Houston. So I agreed to not go home, but to stop at Baton Rouge to their house if they would put, and I, I think I put a random number, I think I said like 20 people, right? Well, they, they more than doubled that. People were, the cars were lined down the street, people were sitting on the floor, I couldn't even get in. And I did exactly what I just demonstrated, Pat, right? And we were using paper applications at the time. Would you believe that people started yelling, well, give me my paper now. Can I, give me, give me, like stepping over other people to try to get their paper first because they understood the message that was just delivered that, hey, these guys are influential. They are gonna build a big business. And if they're going to build a big business, even if I'm not sure that I can do it, I want to give myself a head start by locking in early so that as they continue to succeed, I can look down and I can see, okay, great. I, this is giving me a head start. You guys understanding this? Does everybody understand this? All right. So Absolutely. We, that makes sense, Pat? Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you for being uh thank you for being willing to come on here and share. Um I I like this interactive flight school and I like seeing you guys' faces. Where in the world are you right now, Pat? Because you get all over the place. I actually am in Bermuda. I'm at home, believe oh. it or not. <laughs> you're at home where you're supposed to be. All right. We love that. But but I leave on Friday. <laughs> but you leave on Friday again. All right. Awesome. We love you, Pat. On the road again. <laughs> on the road again. Awesome. 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 Okay. So I hope you guys learned something. Put in your notes today's date, and that way you can find this recording on Facebook and go back and get that piece, okay? All right, uh, let's see. Uh, what did Diana say? Didn't share where others were getting started. Would not recommend selling seats for people to enroll in a lesser pack than they are able. The point is people get in and the new business partner can leverage their business activity or the people you're talking to can be leveraged. Absolutely. And here's my, my, my philosophy on what pack a person needs to sign up at is this. And I let them know this. Everyone should do the very best pack that they can do. If you can do the CEO pack, that's the only choice for you. 
You should not do a lesser pack, right? If you can't do a CEO pack, then you should do an executive pack. If you can't do a CEO pack till next week, you should do an executive pack today. Does that make sense? That's how I wanted to give you guys a little, little tip since you're doing presentations and show you guys how to create that kind of leverage at the end. Mark, you remember those days? Yes, I do. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, what's, what's next in our slide deck? Let's keep it popping. Okay. All right. Share. All right. Yeah, but uh, let's, let's fast forward to Holton Bugs World Tour. And while you're doing that, again, Dr. Latrice said, getting where you fit in. Here's, here's the important thing. When you posture it like that, you will have fewer people waiting till next week or the end of the month or payday, right? Because they should at least do the affiliate pack. Everybody should at least be able to do $99 and get in now because here's what you're... Con Here's what's more important to you than the level that they sign up, that you get access to their list, that you get to start building that team, that you get to start exposing who they know. Because this business is about exposure, 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 and you want to expose more people. And one of the ways to expand your list is to enroll new people and get into their list. Okay? So you'd rather do that now than later, even if it means an affiliate pack today versus maybe a CEO pack in the future because how many people actually do it when they say they're going to do it later on, right? Okay. Um, Holton Bugs World Tour. Okay. Cool. Nope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. What? There we go. Share. Ah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. One stop left on the train. Yes. Indianapolis. May 11th. Be good. PP, what, what's it? PP, what? PDG. PDG. Presidential Diamond. Gary Gibson. Nice. Bring in up the rear. Batting cleanup. Ooh. Yeah. EDDG, the pressure is on, sir. Yeah. The pressure is HB on. Said, HB said yesterday he's going to do some more. He's going to do some more. He's going to do yeah. some more. So that's going to be a big event. He said, no pressure. <laughs> he said, no pressure. He's like, I got this. You know that you do. And we got uh, all the folks saying that they're going to be there. So that's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit. Yeah, I'm there with a guest. Just yep. can't. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. And uh, we got, uh, we got, we're going to talk about how things went in Atlanta in just a minute. But before we get there, let's talk about the Mexico event. Yes. All right. Hey, guys, we are close to telling you when and where. As a matter of fact, I think. I think the next slide tells is going to tell you when we're going to tell you when and where. <laughs> Mr. Bugs himself, our illustrious CEO, industry champion, is going to do a special business presentation this coming Tuesday, no. April 30, April 30 at 12 p.m. Central Time, which is 6 p.m. Central European Time. And at the end of that presentation, he is going to tell you when and where our leadership mastery event will be in Mexico. You will get the date and the location. So you want to be there or be square, right? <laughs> Make sure that you are on with the guest. Your guest may want to come too. It might be a huge launching opportunity for the guest. So you want to make sure you mark that on your calendar. Who's going to be on with Mr. Bugs on Tuesday at 12 noon central. All right. Excellent. 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 This is going to be good. And then we have another special edition. <laughs> Did I get it? <laughs> Got it. PDDG. <laughs> All right. He's going to do May 2nd at noon. And this is another special opportunity briefing. 
with PDDG, Darren Gibson. Absolutely. And this is a warm up for his event. It's a warm up. That's a warm up. So, hey guys, this is going to be a big week. We've got our top guns coming out to help you build your business. Mr. Holton Bugs himself, your CEO, and your presidential diamond, Darren Gibson, doing presentations this week. And don't forget, Mr. Bugs will be announcing the date and location of the Mexico Leadership Mastermind. Nice. Awesome. Good. Awesome. All right. Well, speaking of masterminds, <laughs> Mr. Bugs has been rocking millionaire mastermind tour. So and do we want to show the pictures first? Uh, yeah. Let's yeah. show them. Let's okay. show them. All so right. Atlanta. The team in Atlanta. But hold on a second. Hold on. Let me let me build it up a little bit, sir. So the team, the team in Atlanta. The team in Atlanta. So eager. I know you're an eager beaver. The, the team in Atlanta under the leadership of Blue Diamonds, Jackie and Jayla Pippins, put on a big show of four. They leveraged four events during Mr. Bug's visit. Four packed out, high energy expertly done events they started with an executive lunch an executive luncheon right an executive luncheon is one of our favorite and best formats let me get the executive luncheon slide up okay <laughs> now, late. now you're late now you're late right i mean they went above and beyond with the writing pads and everything uh, but if we, to, if we go to the picture of the yeah. executive luncheon we had just, it was an amazing time. It was an amazing time. Uh, I, I think, is that, uh, I forget who that is, is that Marilyn at the at the front desk there? I think it's Marilyn at the front desk there. You see, we told them do name tags, the red and the blue. They did the clip-on ones in the thing. They went above and beyond. Like, because the, the executive luncheon is like, it's a high-end event, right? And uh and then you see Mr. Bugs there presenting in the front of the room. Yeah. And uh, they had 50 people there. This uh, None of the pictures really shows how many people were really in that room, but there were over 50 people there, six-figure earners or better, all professional people. And Mr. Bugs did his high-end professional-level presentation, and, and you had people that signed up. As a matter of fact, that is where Jane signed up. Right, code name Jane, right? <laughs> to protect us, right? So now uh, Jane signed up there. And then after they did that event, they did a millennials event. Why? Because Blue Diamond Jayla Pippins is one of the millennials. And so she said, you know what? I wanna I wanna do a special event for Mr. Buck to talk to my my generation. And so she hosted an event called Billions and Bites. And uh it was funny because Mr. Bugs asked early in the day, how many people are supposed to be there? Somebody said 30. Well, there were over a hundred people, as you could see, at Billions and Bites, packed with the younger generation to learn about iBoomerang and Elevate and the incredible opportunity that we have. And then on Saturday, they had the actual ticketed millionaire mastermind, which was also packed, packed. Look at this room. You're going to see how many people, I mean, they had tons of folks there. It was crazy successful. Lots of signups, lots of meetings, lots of follow-ups coming out of this event. Then they wrapped it up with the meeting after the meeting. To get to the meeting after the meeting, you had to qualify by having a certain number of guests that actually attended these events, not invited, but actually attended, and Tammy Clayton won for having the actual most guest that showed up. So congratulations. She lives in Houston. And she lives in Houston, and she lives in Houston. I want to say, uh, as we bring on our Blue Diamonds who rock this thing. FX Rich, the better half of the Claytons. Say again? Yeah, FX Rich, the better half of the Claytons. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Uh, if we can bring on, if we can bring on our blue diamonds, Jackie and Jayla, if you can come on, I want to publicly congratulate you and celebrate the two of you. Um, not I mean, first and foremost for all of the crazy work that you had to do to organize these four events. Organizing one event is a lot. Organizing four events, executive luncheon, billions in bikes, millionaire mastermind, and the meeting after the meeting was a Herculean task, but you guys did it. And I say that one of the best things that you did is that there's no question that you are sharp, professional, talented ladies, but you weren't too proud to call and get help, right? To call and say, hey, Tigre, you've been part of this with Holter for a long time. How do we do this event? 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 And I want to tell you this, Holton called me himself and told me how excellent you guys did. You guys executed all of these events to perfection. So congratulations to you guys. Big round of applause. Everybody, everybody shout out Blue Diamonds, Jackie and Jayla Pippins in the chats. Shout them out in the chat. Show them some love. You guys showed everybody what's possible. And uh, you guys learned a lot. So we want to turn the floor over to you to share what you learned in this process, anything and everything. Okay, so I guess I'll go first. <laughs> you know, um, first of all, I have no idea why I asked HB to do a millennial event for me. <laughs> we were just on a call with all of the diamonds and we were talking about the tour and I don't know what, it wasn't planned. I just said it on a call and I knew that he wouldn't say no to me in front of everybody on the call. I knew he wouldn't. And so once I asked, I was like, why did I do it? <laughs> once I asked, I'm like, oh my goodness, why did I do that? So anyway, um, so planning this event, the first thing I did was I saw how successful Jake's event was. Jake had an amazing event and I called him and I said, hey, listen, I need you to give me some pointers and some tips on how I can pack my room out. Um, because yours was packed out. Like you said, we're not too not too proud to ask for help when help is needed. Um, and so Jake gave me some tips and then he said, okay, as a matter of fact, let's go Instagram live together. He was like, you don't, you don't talk enough. We don't see you enough. So let's go Instagram live together. So we did an Instagram live just pre-promoting the event of what was going on. And so thank you so much, Jake, for that. And then I did call you, T. Gray, and was just asking you just some questions, some pointers. And one of the things you asked me was, who are your promoters? And so I had a group of people, you know, everybody said they were going to promote and all this stuff, but I didn't have a set group of people that were going to help me with this event. And so right after that call, what I did was I gathered some people that I knew um, could really help me promote this thing because at the time, and I didn't even tell you, T. Gray, but at the time we had 11 guests. Wow. So, and that's not with mine. I had 30, but at that time, without my guests, I wasn't counting my guests. We had 11. And so I was like, nope, that's not going to work. I knew it wasn't going to work. And so I got um, a specific, uh, specific set of people. Tammy was one of them. And so what we did was we promoted the heck out of the event. And then we had guests bring guests as well. And so, I mean, we killed it. We had so... We would have calls every two days and I would shout out who the guests were. So everybody had to give me their names. They couldn't just give me a number. They had to give me their names because we were doing name tags, pre-written name tags on the tables since we were having food. We called it Billions and Bites. And so they had to give me their names. So every two days I would get on a call and I would, I would say who has what guest or whatever. And nobody wanted their name to be left out. And everybody was like, oh, you didn't say my guest name and you didn't do this. And so at the end of that, at the end of those every two days, we had 140 guests that was confirmed to come to the event. And we had about 100 actually mm -hmm. show up. So that mm -hmm. tells you right there the numbers because we had. OK, so from 11, we had 50. And I was like, this is this isn't enough because if half doesn't show up, that's only 25. 
So I kept telling them we have to up the numbers because we want to up our chances because I already knew that not everybody was going to show up. You already know that. And so I wasn't hyped off of, oh my gosh, we have 50 confirmations. I actually wanted 200 confirmations. Mm-hmm. But we we settled with one. Actually, it was like 145, almost 150 mm-hmm. by the end of it. And so um, and the next time we will have 200 confirmations. But again, I wanted to up my chances on if half didn't show up, we still had, you know, 100 or whatever the case is. And yes, HB thought we were going to only have 30, including business partners, because he asked. <laughs> <laughs> he asked the question if the room was um if the room was gonna be like big enough or it, like he wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna be a lot of room for you know not enough people. Well, he wanted to make sure that you didn't have thirty people in a big room, so it looks like <laughs> people. <laughs> exactly. So I was just cracking up because I knew I knew we were gonna exceed his expectations. I knew that, and that's what I told everybody on the call. I said, "This is not gonna happen. I am going to exceed his expectations." Because I knew I'm not. I think that he believes in all of us. I do believe that he believes in us, but like he said, he don't believe us, right? So <laughs> I knew. I had to exceed his expectations. This was the first time I was doing an event completely by myself. You know, my mom wasn't a part of that event. Mr. Trey Harris wasn't part of that event. So this was something that I needed. Like we had to go all out for this event because it was like my coming out party, right? So um, I'm so excited that we exceeded his expectations. I know I exceeded his expectations because when he walked in that room, he was taking pictures. I had never seen him take pictures before. <laughs> and he don't have a social media, so he don't have nowhere to post it. So I'm yeah. like, I know he was, you know, just excited seeing the room. And we had standing room only. We kept having to say, okay, we're going to start in 15 minutes. Because we, gonna... we had people outside coming in the room. So, Wow. wow. Yeah. That is phenomenal. Jayla, just, can you just remind me of the day that I met you? you so quiet. <laughs> now look at you. You're such a beast. I absolutely love it. So that was wonderful. Uh, Mom, what do you have? You're muted. You're muted. We can't hear you for some reason. Okay. (laughs) All right. Where do we start? Oh, my God. First and foremost, this was an amazing executive lunch. I'm sorry. What'd you say? Start with the executive lunch. Oh, okay. This was an amazing event. Um. First, I'm going to say, I'm going to thank everybody because it just wasn't me and Jayla. It was the entire team that put this together. You know, we we got a lot of help, right? We, we couldn't do this by ourselves because it was just so much to do. First and foremost, let me th- thank our CEOs, definitely, Mr. Holton Buzz, who just did an awesome, awesome job. And definitely his wife, Earlene Buzz, me and her talked throughout the process as well. And then definitely T. Gray, you know, I called you every day, every single day I called you and and I was like, oh my God, he gave me this to do. I got to do this. I got to, I got to go back. Right. And then definitely Mark uh, gave a lot of great input. You you told me about that ice down to that ice uh, at the, don't put ice in the glass. You know, that was just amazing. So we took every advice. Uh, I called on Jake, Kelly, uh, Julius, um, Marianne. Marianne, I called them all, right? How did your event go? What did you do? Uh, what I should do? I mean, it, it was just, it, I just called up on everybody, right? And then definitely uh, Diamond Trey Harris, who came through for us as well. And then the entire team. Um, all my volunteers, Miss Ardell, Candice, Kia, Miss Diva, Tracy and Paris, Carolyn Waller, our DJ showed out, Mr. Bernard, okay? Danielle Lovely, D, uh, Diane Hardy, who was on our tech person, Mr. Douglas Sands, Robin Box, Samantha Gilbright, the Cheeks, the Cheeks showed out, right? Um, Miss Joy Steele, which was our photographer. And definitely I want to thank our Emeralds, uh, Mr. Donnie Pips who bought all the wonderful, amazing gifts. He was there throughout the entire time. And Mr. James Wooten, he was the security. And you guys know Mr. James Wooten <laughs> does not play about Holton Bugs, all right? 
he hmm. was on his post, right? And then Vita uh, Wooten, you know, we traveled and talked to different people. I mean, we just did, um, you know, did a lot of things. So it was the team that uh, helped pull this together as well. So, so, so hold, on, hold on a second before you go. Let's just let's get everybody to put that in their notes. You know, it's cliche, but it is true. Teamwork makes the dream work. Right. So, you know, you have a leader, you have somebody, somebody's got to run point. Right. If there's a if you were in a car together, somebody's got to be sitting behind the steering wheel. But it takes the team to make it happen. And so congratulations for for uh, to, to your whole team, Jackie and Jayla. And um, definitely yeah. Miss yeah, Murray, no, no. Mm -hmm. who took care of everything, made sure everything was point A, point B. Danielle was, D Lovely was, she ran that beans and bites with Jayla. So everybody did an amazing job. I hope I didn't forget anyone, but you, you did. Pat. So I had a guest. Simply, yes. yes, I had a guest that was literally an hour before the event. He was telling me that he wasn't going to be able to come because he didn't have his babysitter. They came, she had a family emergency. And so um, he was like, I just don't think I'll be able to come. He called like his mom and like his uh, other kids and they weren't able to watch them on such short notice. And Pat was sitting right, happened to be sitting right next to me. And she was like, oh, I can do it. And so they came, they brought their kid, they allowed Pat to babysit. So Pat was babysitting while uh, HB said Vita was knitting outside the door. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So Pat was babysitting. Vita was knitting. Everything was amazing. It was an amazing event. And we had, because T. Gray, you remember you said, my challenge is going to be, I'm going to have too many guests outnumbering the business partners because we didn't have a lot of business partners that was going to be in the room. And so what I did was the people that couldn't get in that were knitting right outside, I had them stand outside so that when they were coming through the doors, they would be right there. Right there to close. Okay. To close. So, <laughs> you had, a, you had, to, run, had to run through a closing gauntlet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't play. It. We didn't play any games. So, so how this all got started? So we 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 had calls, calls after calls after calls. And so what we did every week, we went out prospecting. Like I took to kill Kenlaw came all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina, four hours every week until. Soon as Mr. Buzz gave us a definite date, we just went in. We just went full force. I didn't want to go out of town. I didn't. Want, I was scheduled to go out of town. I canceled it because I needed to be on doing groundwork, right? So T. Gray, you're not gonna believe this. We went prospecting one night. Myself, Jayla, and Kia. You know, we went prospecting and uh, went in this real, real nice place, right? Came out. We were looking for my car. I said, where in the world is my car? And come to find out, T. Gray, somebody stole my car. No they way. Stole. Yeah. Yes. And this is the car that was going to pick up Holt and Buzz and take him around everywhere. And I said, no oh, way. my God. what I'm, I just, just could not believe this, right? So I uh, called my husband. He came and picked us up and everything, right? We called the police. We made a report. We did We did all the necessary things, right? Went home, went to bed, right? Woke up. I was like, got on the phone, called my insurance. I need a luxury vehicle right away. So we got a vehicle. We kept it moving. We kept it moving. And uh, Jay even made a statement. She was like, did the car really get stolen? Because we kept it moving. We didn't have time to to think about, you know, what was going on, right? So we just kept it moving. We, the next day, we, that was Thursday when it happened, we went out again Friday, prospecting. That's Saturday. And then, yeah, and then that Saturday, we were out prospecting again, right? And uh, a police called me. It was like one o'clock. He was like, are you in your car? I said, no, I'm not in my car. Somebody, uh, we, we found your car. I said, oh, okay. He said, I'll call you back. I said, okay. He called me two or three times, kept asking me questions. And I said, okay, we steady prospecting, doing what we do. So uh, he called me about 10 o'clock that night. He was like, hey, we got your car. We sat here five hours. We're waiting on somebody to come out and claim it. Nobody did. You can come and pick up your car. 
So I went to pick up the car. We went to, all of us went to pick up, pick up the car. And the only damage that was done was they broke the side view mirror, which cost them about $3,000 to get that fixed. But they mm. broke that. And then the, oh, what I was really upset yeah. about, you guys, yes. I wasn't so upset about the car being missing, but I had those T-shirts and those pads and pins in that car. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was, I, I was like, oh, my God. So I had, I ended up replacing all of that. I had to replace all oh, of that. Oh, the T-shirts and the pads and pens were yes. gone when you got the car? Yes, oh, they were gone. gone. Yeah, they was in a box, in a car, mm -hmm. in the car. So and there's some thieves running around Atlanta in Millionaire Mastermind T-shirts? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. And so I had to replace that. But when I got the car back, it smelled like real funny cigarettes in my car. And <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyway. So it was, that, your event that, was on 420. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. It was on 420. So, you know, we had to keep it. We just had to keep it moving. I called Trey. I told him, you know, what was happening. But I got another vehicle. We just going to keep it moving. And so, you know, that's what I didn't even tell the team what was going on. Mm -hmm. We don't have time. We don't make excuses. We make adjustments. So, mm -hmm. you know what? Here's 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 a there's a real lesson in that. Right. There's a real lesson in that because average people, something like that would have stopped them dead in their tracks. Some people would have even canceled the event, right? Or some people would have used that as an excuse for the event to turn up light or for things to not be in place that should have been in place. You didn't even tell me this. You said you were going to tell me something on flight school. I, I'm assuming that this is it. This and is the first time we're hearing this. I just want to say phenomenal. Like just, a, just an example of, hey, you know what? This shit is happening, but it got nothing to do with the mission, right? It's a car, it's a vehicle, it's a thing. We can replace that, right? The, you know, like you said, you were more upset about the t-shirts and the pads, the things that were for your meeting, right? And uh, I, just, I just say phenomenal leadership and steadiness. And I just want to challenge everybody here. I want to challenge everybody. Here's the deal. You need to determine right now what is it that will stop you? What is it that will stop you? What is it going to take to stop you? Because obviously it's going to take a whole heck of a lot to stop Jackie and Jalen. But what is it going to take to stop you? Right? Exactly. And T. Gray, remember when HB was um, doing the training years ago and he was talking about they won't outfriend me. Mm-hmm. And so we took that so serious and every single person we do business with, we get to know them on a personal level, every single person. And so the, the, the guy who did our t-shirts, I actually met him on Google and um, he's, he's my elevate customer, by the way, he's made like over a thousand dollars and stuff with, with trading. I had him on profit snatchers, but either way, he was out of town when the car got stolen and was like, oh, I'll come back like on earlier to make sure you guys have your T-shirts for the event because I want to make sure you guys have that. And the lady who did our pads was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll redo them for you. No problem. So if these were strangers or if these were people that we were just kind of like you know, not, not really took the time to develop relationships with, maybe they wouldn't have took it as serious or been as like, you know what I mean? Like the sense of urgency, maybe right. we've been there, but they knew who we were. We under, they understood like, look, we're not lying. This is something that really happened. And we need you to come through for us because we're out of our stuff. And so this is why it's so important to develop relationships, even if they're not your business partners, still be cool with people, be friends with people, because you never know when you may need them. Amen. That's a, that's a whole training and a whole lesson right there. Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. So T. Yeah. Gray, have your car ever been swallowed? <laughs> you know what? You know, my, my car hasn't been swallowed. It's been vandalized. It's been vandalized. But, uh, I that part, whoo, man, man. Was just one of those let me know where that was. I actually have a car that I might like them to steal. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> parking in that lot. 
<laughs> my car is paid for. I'm gonna have to start this process all back over. I just kept thinking crazy things, but it just right. happened. So I would have worried for nothing. I've got the car back and it's in the garage and all that good stuff. Um, so Friday, um, we were getting ready for the luncheon, right? The the six figure lunch. I get a phone call from my sister. And my sister said, "You, uh, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting ready for my major, major, major event. And she said, well, I got some news for you. I said, what's going on? She said, uh, your sister, Bessie, she, they just found her daughter uh, in the car dead. I'm like, oh, my God. But I couldn't go there either. I said, oh, man, sad to hear that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give her a call as soon as this event's over and, you know, do what I have to do. But again, T. Gray Mark. I had a mission to accomplish mm -hmm. and I couldn't go there with what was happening. What, with what wow. was happening. There's nothing I could do about it at right. that time, right? And so I went and then put on a great successful event and mm -hmm. we went from there. We just kept we just kept going. We just kept going. We just kept going. We just kept going. Wow. Wow. That lesson, that lesson continues. What will stop you? What will stop you, right? Amazing, amazing. I can't wait to talk to you after this after flight school. Um, so let's talk about uh let's take some of our remaining time now. Key observations, things that you learn from Mr. Bugs over the course of these four events. Okay, so okay. One of the things that I some of the things that I learned, I learned a whole lot from him. He just he just put you on a totally another level. You know what you were thinking? Uh uh. Just just move. Just get that out of the get it that out of the picture. Mister Holton Bugs does not want us to be average, right? Because everybody is doing average things. He doesn't want us to do average things because average people get average results, right? So one of the things that he said in the meeting, he said. You know how all the time people say misery loves company, you know, mm -hmm. misery loves company. And he said, so when you say that, everybody thinking in their mind, I'm not misery. So they're not talking to me. No, they're not talking to me. He said, no, it's not misery loves company. He said, misery loves comfort. Mm. Comfort. See, we're mm -hmm. all living in our comfort zone. So we think it's okay. They're not talking about us, but it's misery loves company. I was like, oh my goodness, that is that's that is just it. You know, if you were in that room, there's no reason a guest shouldn't have got started about some of those nuggets that Mr. Holton Bugs was saying. One of the other things he's saying, he said, how many people in here filled out an application before a job application? People raise their hand. So he said, how many uh, filled out one that pays 50000 He got a lot of hands. And then he said, how about 100000 So he got a, few, got a few hands. And then he said, how many people in here has filled out an application that pays a million dollars? One person raised their hands. He said, you see what I mean? He said, how come you haven't applied for a million dollars? Because you're doing what the average people are doing. You have no mm. competition over here. So why mm. are you being average? And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. This is just crazy. This is just crazy. He was great. He was on point. Definitely. And he's he's a comfort loves company. Because he said people don't want to admit that they're miserable. So mm. comfort loves company. But one of the things that I paid attention to with HB was how he dressed at every single event. Right. It was completely I noticed different. that. You noticed that? <laughs> yeah. At yes. the figure, it was, you know, blazer. Like he looked like business, right? At mm -hmm. the millennial event, he had this awesome jacket. I mean, the jacket was amazing. You could, he just wow. looked like money. But it was just, right. just, just a jacket, a nice jacket. Um, like leather, like a leather jacket. If you guys go back in the in the photos, you'll see it. Right. And then at the uh, Saturday meeting, he dressed completely different. And even at our meeting after the meeting, he dressed completely different. So he showed up as different people at every single event because presentation matters. Like he said, back in Houston, 
I am the presentation. The yeah, presentation yeah. starts, right? The presentation starts when I walk in the door. He had on this nice, um, expensive watch. I don't even remember how much it cost. I just know it was expensive. And so, and every time he talked, you could just, just take a little glance at it. Just every time. And so all of that was just, I just learned the little things from him. Um, the presentation was absolutely amazing and the things that he said, but it was the way that he would walk into a room. It was the way that he sometimes like on my event, he walked into the room first, sat down first, took a look at the, at the room. He walked back out, then came back in, took some pictures like from his seat, took some pictures from his seat. But at the Saturday event, he didn't walk in first. He allowed us to, you know, bring him up. He walked into the room. So all of those little things, it's going to be different for every event because your audience is going to be completely different. And the stuff that he talked about, I mean, the foundation was the same, of course, but it was just the way he talked to, to, to the crowd was completely different every single time. So, you know, Jayla, my, my journals are full of observations like that. I'm so proud of you for, for picking up on those things, right? Because we can easily pick up on the th things that he says, right? And I, and I shouldn't even use the word easily because he says a lot and, 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 and most people miss it, right? Mm -hmm. But I also learn a lot from what he does and mm -hmm. how he shows up, right? And I used to do that in my journal all the time. I would write, I literally have in my journal, Colton walked in the room, did this, he was wearing this or whatever, because you learn a lot from that. Like how he, he literally taught you just by doing what he's learned to do, how to walk into a room and how to walk into different rooms and how to, how to change your packaging so that you sit, you, you fit the scenario that you're in. Right. How not to overdress. Like he didn't come with a suit to billions and bites. Right. He dressed hip, cool. I, re I remember the jacket that he wore. I was like, man, that's a fly jacket. I wish you'd give me my jacket back. Right. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> but you learn a lot from from those things. The same way people can learn a lot from the two of you and how you stayed focused despite adversity that got more and more personal uh, as as the challenges began to line up. So absolutely phenomenal. Um, Holt is gonna, he's got two more events coming up, right? He's got uh, Indianapolis and he is now committed to North Carolina. So he's, so we're gonna, we don't have dates or anything for North Carolina yet. Um, I know you guys have already pledged your involvement to that. So uh, that's gonna, that's gonna happen. Plus you have team members there. So in any event, um, what advice do you have for the team in Indianapolis and, of course, the team in North Carolina? Let me say this first, Peter. I, I forgot to mention the gifts. So um, at the celebration, um, you know, we definitely wanted to show our appreciation for the bugs. So we got them some nice gifts. And the again, the team came through. It wasn't just us. You know, it was the team. So um they bought some real, real nice gifts, Carolyn, Miss Danielle, and uh, Vita. But one of the, the gifts that Jayla and I was able to give him, we got him a book, right? We And on the outside of the book, it says, we wrote a book about you. And then it said, Holton Buds. And he grabbed that book. He was like, oh my God, y'all, this is the best gift I ever gotten. I was like, whoa, right? And so we, uh, everybody uh, wrote a statement in there, what they thought about him. And we had our pictures at the top of the book so he can relate to uh, some of the, uh, wow. relate to the people. And we uh, didn't get around to getting everybody's picture. I was like, can I just keep the book so I can get it? He said, oh no, you're not getting my book. No, he said, I am not letting <laughs> this book go. So he absolutely, he, he absolutely loved that gift because you thinking in your mind, what can you get somebody that got that has everything already? And so we thought about right. that book. And, and uh, so he absolutely, you know, love, 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 love those gifts. Right. And here's what I have for Mr. Derek Gibson. Good luck, because we set the bar high for you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 
PDDG. Oh my God, PDDG, you still out there? You, is on. he there? PDDG, is Mr. Gibson, Gibson out there? Better chill. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Hold on. PDDG, I'm I'm putting you on. I'm bringing you on. You, I promoted you to panelist. I'm bringing you on. There's no because they they throwing they throwing out challenges, sir. Hey. They're throwing out challenges. So let's go ahead and make you uh hold on. I'm gonna make you a co-host so you can turn on your camera if you want to, uh, and address the challenge that has been thrown out there. What what so, challenge? Uh, what challenge uh, you talking about? No, you want you want to say it again? <laughs> Well, what, challenge, what, 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 what challenge you talking about again? So, so, Mr. Gibson, when we were on the HB coaching system, you said to T. Gray, oh, I'm going to sign folks up uh, 15 minutes after meeting. But what I, I said is I'm going to sign people up before the meeting. So we signed them up before, in between, and after, and we're still signing folks up. Okay, well, this, this is what I'll do then. A after they get signed up after at our before HB gets on his flight, I'll make sure that I break some sapphires and rubies. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and there you have it, folks. There you have it. I'm just going to tell you right now. No. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, uh, honestly, you guys did go over and beyond. Um, uh, Jayla, that, that room was absolutely absolutely phenomenal uh you you've given me i remember you asking that question with um with mr bugs on the diamond uh call and um jason got to step up now uh he got to do something like the same thing what you just did uh because uh that was that was absolutely phenomenal and um and mrs jackie obviously with you know you gave me some nuggets as nuggets well, well. uh with the um uh the even the, the pens and the papers and all that, you guys went over and beyond. Um, it shows that you are investing back into your business and it always pours back into your pockets. So, um, you know, if we're building a billion dollar business, then we got to start, we got to start dressing the par. We got to start um, doing exactly what you guys just did. So kudos to you guys. Um, I'll give you guys a B minus, but uh, you'll see ours is an A plus. <laughs> A B minus. Oh my gosh. We we gave you an A double plus. PDD is giving you a B minus. He's giving a B minus. A little right? biased. But I'm just playing. I'm I'm going I'm definitely going to be giving you guys a call to see how you guys plan some things to to make ours even um up there with you guys, what you guys have done. So congratulations on everything. Yeah. Team work makes it work, bro. Yes, yes. So excited about Mr. Bugs coming to Indianapolis. And then uh, Shiloh and Danny are, uh, you know, they they um, they stepped up and asked for the blessing and they got it. So they they get to be the host for the event in uh, North Carolina. And uh, of course, with the assistance from from all the teams, they're up line diamond, Kelly, how et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Yeah. So wonderful, wonderful. Jackie, yeah. Jay, would y'all have any parting shots for everybody? Yes. So I didn't get to say my um, like kind of, you know, what we learned for the. Oh, the, please, please go ahead. You don't don't people, rush. It. Yes, it's going to have their events as well. Um, first of all, you ask Holton for things when he can't say no. <laughs> so yes. now I know when I want that watch to ask in front of the entire room. <laughs> He's going to say no, by the way. He's going to say no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, but I'm going to sound like T. Gray in any event. He <laughs> but um, just the advice that we would give is, you know, first of all, prom getting your promoters together, who's helping you promote the event. It cannot be just you and two or three other people. You want to make sure that you've got some people that like some real fire behind you that's going to help you promote the event. The second thing I would say is also go out, take your team prospecting with you. What we did is every single weekend we went out, even throughout the week, we went out, we went out prospecting. And even Kia, she didn't just come into Atlanta two days before the event and said, oh, I'm going to have 20 people there. She came weeks and weeks and weeks before. She didn't stay like weeks. She just, she would drive down. She would go back four home. Four hour drive. Exactly. Four hours there and four hours back. For like three, four weeks straight, she came. She, you know, she was driving because she wanted a piece of the market share. 
And you got to be very intentional when you truly want a piece of, you know, of the market. So it's not enough to just come a day or two days before you got to come and you got to really, really promote this thing, which is going out. And when we go out, people think that we're just, oh, billions and buys come to billions and buys. It's not like that. We're meeting people on a genuine level. We're talking to them. They're telling us what they're doing. And I'm saying, oh, I need your number. We need to connect. When we connect later is when I'll tell them about the event and about the business and all that stuff. But you do not have to sit and tell every single person about the business right away. That's what people are thinking that they have to do. And it kind of takes the pressure off when you think of, okay, let me just get the number and I'll invite them later. And so that's how you can run through your numbers faster, because now when you're out prospecting and you're telling people what your business is, they may want to sit there and talk to you. And I'm not about to do all that. I got more people's numbers to get. So we were getting numbers. I mean, every single um, every single weekend. And we even used her car as a tactic to get people's number. You know, I was like, be careful out here. They selling cars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. L let me get your number. <laughs> <laughs> so you know That's, just be you know, Zayla we did that as a training remember make a friend get a number yes so we, we yes need to, we need to bring that out we need to come back on flight school in a in a few weeks and we need to teach people how to never run out of prospects and we're going to teach them what you guys are doing called make a friend get a phone number Exactly. And then we were focused on, remember T. Gray, you were saying that we have to be more focused on closing out than just having the event. So what we did was we got paper applications and we told HB ahead of time that we had paper applications so that he knew how to close. Um, you know, and we handed them out before they got up out of their seat. We handed them the paper apps and he was closing. And that's why he said what he said about the paper apps. How many of you guys filled out because we had paper applications. And so uh, another thing that we had is we had a sign up table. When they came out the room, there was a table that I purposely put. They had to go past the table and they had to kind of squeeze past the table. So I put it there and it was a, a sign up uh, sign. And we had computers and iPads there at the table to sign people up immediately at the event. So all they had to do was hand their paper applications to the person and they put them in the system. And we already had people's ID numbers and all that stuff. So we had a whole system on how we were going to sign them up. And we also had closers standing by the um by the door. So the people that slip by the sign up table would get them right there. So, so let, me, yeah. let me let me say this, right? Sometimes yes. people don't win simply because they are not prepared to win. Right? And what you guys did is very intentional. You were prepared to win. Sometimes a lot of time we put a lot of energy and thought into putting on the event and we forget that the event is to add to the team. And so you guys were very intentional and very prepared to capture that interest in the moment. I remember talking with you guys about the executive luncheon. Everybody who had guests at the executive luncheon also had their iPad or their tablet ready to go to sign up those guests because you weren't going to necessarily hand out the paper pa paperwork at that particular event. But at Billions and Bytes and at the Millionaire Mastermind, you guys were ready and you went the, you went all the way with it. You didn't just have the paperwork. You didn't just have the photocopies. You didn't just have the people ready to hand them out. You made sure that Holton knew because that's where you could have dropped the ball. You could have done all of that, but you didn't tell Holton. And then he doesn't close that way. And then you tell him afterwards, he goes, oh, you should have told me. Right. So you told him and then that way he was ready to play the game that particular way. And that is truly phenomenal. And so what you guys are is a model example of being intentional. Everybody write that in the chat. Intentional. Right. Pee Wee Herman. What was he famous for saying? What was he what was Pee Wee Herman famous for saying? I meant to do that. I meant to do that. Right. Well, guess what? When you guys won because you meant to do that. So badass. I love it. And that. one more thing we did. What so else? once they signed up at the sign up table, we got them registered for our launch on Saturday. 
So those, not everybody was going to launch the same exact way and not everybody was going to launch at the same time. So we had a 12 o'clock and we had a two o'clock. So we had one for customers, which is Danielle and Rich. They were walking the customers through their back office, how to set up a trading plan and what our trading system is because we have our own trading system and the jet setters. Okay. So that was for the customers. For the ones that are getting started, that's not necessarily our big builders. They're they're they are ready to get started. They're get, they're ready to do their ten and two brick system. We had Kia and Diva. Those were the best people because you know Diva, she's gonna bring it, and Kia's gonna bring that corporate. You know the nice, the soft. So for those that uh, got started actually in the business, they attended Kia and Diva's class, one at 12, one at two o'clock. They got to choose between which time they were available because, you know, somebody may say, well, I'm not available at 12. I'll get with you later. No, we have another one at two. Mm -hmm. We also had one at four just in case. But um, so 12 and two o'clock was the times that was for the customers and for Diva and Kia. And then for our massive builders, the ones that were ready to launch, ready to go. You had myself, my mom, Mr. Trey Harris and Mr. Kevin Clayton that was ready to launch them right away because we're not going over five steps and what's your why. That's not what we're getting ready to do. We're going to get some people in the system. So that's what we did. And we've already done launches in person as well, not just on Zoom. We've done in-person launches. I just did another call. I think it was yesterday. 10 guests, 10 guests on the line. And so we're we're rolling. And so we already nice. have this scheduled and planned. So when they signed up, they already had something to get on and launch their business. Beautiful. You see what I'm talking about? That's, that's an intentional win, right? All of you knew, you, even though, you put a lot of energy and work into the preparation. You never lost sight of what the end game was, right? The end game wasn't the meeting after the meeting with Mr. Bugs so he can tell you how well you did. The end game was, did we add new people to the team and did we get them into motion? When we got, back, when we got access to their list, did we capitalize on that blessing? And you did, and that is the model. And that's what we want everybody to learn from this. I hope you all put this in your notes, right? What did you learn today? What did you learn today on flight school? This is literally one of the most powerful flight schools that we've ever had because of all the lessons you just learned from what Jackie and Jayla just shared with you, right? I mean, sign up table, computers, getting started meetings already, Zoom's already set and scheduled to can direct people to, getting started acclimation call for customers even to make sure the customers get locked in properly. All the details, all the details. We said a few weeks ago, the devil is in the details. And now you understand what that absolutely <laughs> So you guys, Jackie, Jayla, phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for being you. Hi, bro. Thank so you guys. Let me say this too, great. Um, we had a lot of people travel from out of town. Mm -hmm. So definitely hats off for them. We had people drove from um, hours and hours away and got on planes and they did all that. We definitely want to shout out to uh, Mr. Diamond Trey Harris. You know, he was there for Holton. He picked him up. You know, he did all of those things and plus helped us as well. And then I, I want to give a hats off Tigray to Miss uh, J.M. Steele, George Steele. She had her first CEO package sign up. Uh, wow. And, um, um, during this time, she, uh, she had five guests in the room. The qualifications was at least five guests. And basically all of the team had over five guests, you know, plus. And one of the things you said to me, T. Gray, you said anybody that out recruit you in guests, give them a hundred dollars. I said, okay, we're going to do that. I did not announce it to the team, but nobody had more guests than myself and Jayla. We had 22 <laughs> guests and I think, I don't know what number was close to us, but we did, uh, we did do more than anybody had. had nah. but, no, um, that's, but the Jackie, that's a lesson too, right? Yeah. Because very often the leader will do all this prep work and, and, and leave the inviting to the team. 
right? But you did all the prep work and you out invited everybody else. Like you basically said, if it's going to be, it's up to me. If this meeting is going to be successful, it's going to be up to me. If nobody has guests, well, I sure as hell gonna have some guests. And, and by the way, that is a, that is a trait of top performers. You know who just told me that? Jake just told me that. They had an event and he was like, he put it, he put a challenge out there and he said, uh, I got dinner or whatever for people, for whoever does X, Y, and Z. And he said, he messaged me back. He said, I was the only one who did it. So I'm taking my wife to dinner. Right. <laughs> so same thing with you guys. That's another, another example of why you're great. I, I think you had something else you wanted to share. Oh no, that was it. I, th I think that was, it was just so much, but hopefully I didn't forget anything. Everything was just top notch. Wow. Uh, oh, we did get Mr. Bugs a, a huge cake. It was a real nice cake with his picture and his Rolls Royce on there. And we put on there the best CEO ever. We almost brought that man to tears, uh, <laughs> you know, with the thing <laughs> that we did. I just, <laughs> just want to give that big hats off to you. You overcame many, many challenges and you still had the most people in the room. Dude. And we give gifts because we always want the the person that's coming to to pour into us. We always want them to say, "I want to come back here because of the way that I'm being treated." Yeah. I always want them to say, "I'm going to come back," or I never want if I ask for something, I never want it to be, "Oh my gosh, she's asking me again." Like I'm just taking, taking, taking. So I always want to be on the side of of giving as well. So this is why we give the gifts to HB because some people, I have to say that because some people out there may say, "Well, why do they give them gifts?" And why did we have to under you have to understand that this man he gave us for amazing events, amazing events. And so we have to pour into him, Mrs. Erlene Bugs. We have to do what we can so that they will always say, I want to come back to Atlanta. Atlanta, we always want Atlanta to be on the forefront of their mind. And that is a training in itself. Yeah, That's absolutely. Yeah. yeah, let me do this. Did, did, uh, did Mr. Bugs send you guys the bill yet for his airfare? <laughs> no. <laughs> what about for his hotel? No. <laughs> what about his transportation to and from the airport? Did, uh, you know, in uh, in Miami, did he did he send you that? Nope. No. No. And so, so that's why you give gifts because you realize this. Not only is, is is this individual coming to serve you and to help you build your business, they're doing it at their own expense, right? And they're taking time away from their families and things that they could be doing. And and it doesn't matter if it's Mr. Bugs. It doesn't matter if it's Jackie and Jayla coming to your city. Or Mr. Gibson, or 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 Desi, or or any of these diamonds, or anybody, or or Vita coming here, you know, driving two or three hours to another city in in Georgia to come. You always honor the people who are coming to serve and help you, right? It doesn't necessarily mean you always have to give gifts, but you always honor them, right? That's why we did that training when we talked about our culture. When when that person goes to dinner with you. They, you, they don't pay. Why? Why are they paying? They just, you know what I mean. They just paid their gas. They just paid their hotel. They just paid their airfare. Well, you you pay for their dinner. That's the least you could do. So, so Jayla, again, you guys are embodying the the model of appreciation, edification, and respect that uh, that all of us need to have as a culture in our business. Thank you for that. Yeah. Did Mister Bugs have any guests? Yes. Yes. He had three guests in the room. Hey. Oh, T. Gray, I want to shout out to Anna as well, because Anna took care of us and, and me and her were going back and forth. I was giving her the schedule, you know, what our schedule looks like. And it changed a few times. And she was like, oh, my God, it's changed again, you know, because we had so many events. And um, when I sent her the schedule, she sent me back. She said, well, Holton plan on going out, doing something on Friday night. I said, not this time. Maybe the next time <laughs> we did not give him room to do anything. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You got, you got him there. You need to make sure you secure your blessing. So great job. Great job. Awesome. Well, I tell you what, this was joyous for me. I'm super proud of you guys. I cannot wait to hear how, how things go in Indianapolis and, and then down the road in North Carolina. Can't uh, wait on that one. Yep. You guys set the bar high. You did. 
You did PDDG. You, I know you said no pressure, <laughs> but uh, they they are uh, they're trying to pressure you. So, are you guys going to be in North Carolina? Yes, you know we're going to be in North Carolina. <laughs> in North Carolina. <laughs> that was a dumb question. <laughs> awesome. Well, I tell you what. Let's take let's take our let's take our picture and let's wrap this up. Uh, definitely a great flight school. Thank you again. Thank you again for that. And uh, on three. It's time to be posers. You guys ready? Everybody get your screenshots ready. And by the way, if you if you put these on your your Instagram or whatever, make sure you tag us. Here we go. On three, two, one, and
And that's a wrap. We -hmm. love you guys. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Jayla. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Letitia, Pat, Darren, Kia, Robin, and everybody who participated in flight school today. We love you guys. Let's have a huge week. And yes, we have our HB system coaching call tomorrow. Awesome. Love you, ambassadors.